Stephanie Milkey here, a.k.a. Keto Mom, or often called mom, sis, Steffi, daughter, wife, aunt, and friend. Just like many of you, I carry a lot of titles. My favorite title is mom. I should probably say wife, which takes a lot of my time. But let's be honest. If you want to do something and do it well, you will make the time for it. Commitment is hard because we find ourselves overcommitted. But when you practice prioritizing, you will find out what is actually important and what you can let go. With the Keto Mom Podcast, you will learn together how to manage our time, commit to the most important things in life, and I will equip you with the tools you need to feel qualified each step of the way. My name is Stephanie Milkey, and welcome to the Keto Mom Secrets Podcast. Good morning. Welcome to the Keto Mom page. My name is Stephanie, and we're going to have a great conversation this morning. So as you're tuning in, where are you tuning in from? I have a couple things I want to talk about. I'm going to talk about who are you and what does that mean? Uh, I'm going through this book called The Pursuit. I've actually already gone through this book before. If you've been following along for a while, we've gone through books for two years. At any point in time, you can go to, we have a website or a blog. It's Keto Mom Secrets, all one word. So if you go to ketomomsecrets.com and you click on book club, you can go through, I think it's like 25 books. I don't really know. But one of them was The Pursuit. And so what I'm doing until we get to our next destination is I'm just picking out a couple topics out of the book to talk about. So today we're going to talk about who are you? What does that mean? What does that look like? What are you called to do? Just a couple thoughts to get you thinking this morning. I believe 100% your mindset is so important. It really determines if you're going to hit your goal or not hit your goal. If you're going to achieve the things that you say you want or if you're going to sit back and just sit in the comfort that you know because it's comfortable but not. Make sense? So where are you tuning in from? Uh, I was listening. So I was reading this morning. Uh, you guys, it's a rainy day here in Minnesota. I opened up. I was reading this morning and just getting my own mindset right. I opened up my social media and I had a ton of questions <laughs> of where are you moving? Why are you moving? I can't believe that you're moving. I missed something. Uh, and it's interesting. It's interesting why somebody, you know what? It, let, me, let me rephrase this. Isn't it interesting how you can follow somebody's life on social media and you're like, man, why would you do this? Or I would never do that. Or I can't believe that you're the amount of people that have said to me, I can't believe that you're leaving that home. I, w I, I just chuckle and I'm like, yeah, uh, our family prior to COVID, prior to the pandemic, traveled a ton. We've lived in many different states. You would think we're a military family, but we're not. And so change to us isn't new. And, but we also really truly like to just go, all right, where is the Lord leading us? Uh, is there an opportunity? Why are we leaving this amazing home? So I just, it was interesting to hear people's perspectives and thoughts on, I can't believe that you're moving. We are, we're moving from Minnesota to Florida. Why? And I said, and the other day I told this lady, she was a little rude about it from what I could read and gather. And I said, she was like, I can't believe, you know, and, and her perspective. And I said, um, we're moving to Florida. And she goes, why would you do that? And then whatever else she said. And I said, because I want to <laughs> probably not the best answer. Uh, but for, here's what I'll tell you. And I was thinking about this this morning as I was reading this chapter called who are you? Um, we're moving and it might be for a year and it might be for longer. We're renting for a year, which that in itself, just, just physically moving from here to Florida. Like how many of you have ever moved from a different home, even just down the street, let alone across the country? I told one of my friends yesterday, and then I told everybody yesterday, seriously, moving is like childbirth. Like, it's exciting. You're so excited. And then you get to the middle of it. And depending on how your pregnancy is, you're like, this is so exciting. And then you get to the birth part and you're like, this is not fun anymore. Can we take it all back? I don't want to do it. And then 
you're there. So like this middle part that we're in right now, yesterday I told my husband, Hey, can we be done? Uh, I'm done. I actually, I'm, I don't want to do it, but we're in the middle. You can't, it's like, we're pushing. <laughs> it's like the middle of labor. It's not an option. You've got to keep going. Right? So I said, Oh my goodness. I don't want to do this again. Uh, we don't have an option. We're renting to make sure it's 100% what, what we feel like the Lord has either called us to do or it's going to be a blessing to our girls. I said, but it's funny because you forget. You forget because then you're like, I'm excited again. So I say all of that because that was my mindset yesterday. It was quite humorous to me. I was like, I can't, I can't quit. Like, it's not an option. We have to birth this move. <laughs> We have to birth the move, you guys. Oh, my goodness. Anyways, okay. So people are funny. Here's what I'll tell you. We're moving for our kids. That in itself, when I tell people that, makes them baffled. Why would you do that? And so I was thinking about this today. I'm actually going to tell anybody else that says something to me. I'm going to say this. Pre pretend my kids are in the Olympics. They're, the, they're in the Olympics of their youth. And... This is going to be a pivotal moment where they're either going to get the gold or we're going to fail and we're going to move back. <laughs> and so I thought, isn't that funny? Because in different people's perspectives and depending on what people give you an answer for, if my child was going to compete in the next Olympics for gymnastics, you'd be like, of course you're going to move. She needs the best training. She needs all of the things, right? Right. But if I say, well, our girls are going to go plug into a youth group where there's incredible leadership, like uh, a leadership for youth and uh, an incredible youth group in itself, they're going to go plug in. We're going to plug them in to an awesome opportunity to see what happens. I know our girls want to do something in ministry. It's where we're going. And some people are like this. What? And so I think what I'm going to start saying is my girls are going into the Olympics for youth, leadership of youth. We're either getting the gold or we're going to be thankful that we we risked it, we tried, and, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> so I was like, I'm going to start saying that. We're, we're going to train for the Olympics. What else are we going to move for? So I don't know if you think that's funny. I, I thought it was funny. All right. I was listening to one of my friends this morning. So I read my Bible. Listen, if you, well, I think it's the book of wisdom. Read Proverbs 15 today because today's the 15th. Um, and then I also had a friend say something. It, it, well, she was doing a live this morning and she said this, how you make someone feel says a lot about you. And I was like, oh my goodness, that's so good. How you make somebody feel says a lot about you. You know these people. You're in a room. You're at church. You're at an event. You're at a party, right? There are certain people that walk into a room and they bring joy. And you're like, oh my goodness, I'm so excited to see them. And you're like, they bring a smile. They bring peace. They like, like how you make somebody feel says a lot about that person. You also probably know the opposite, right? Somebody walks into a room and you can feel the stress. You can feel like, I don't want to go talk to that person. I have both of these people in my life. People that bring joy and then people that I'm like this. Are they crabby? Are they like, what side of life are they on right now? What am I going to get? Like, I'm not scared to talk to that person, but I don't know if I want to feel that anxiousness from them, right? So I just want you to even evaluate yourself. If you walked into a room, if when you walk into a room at your office, Listen, it might be your own home with your family. When you go anywhere, which person are you? How you make someone feel says a lot about you. How do you make somebody feel? I'm going to guess you can probably say, ooh, I'm, I'm joyful. I, I'm going to say for myself, I'm joyful. When I walk into a room, I walk into a room with a smile. I'm excited to see people like, I want to encourage somebody. I want to make their day. You probably might say to yourself, yeah, that's not me. Like, I don't feel joyful myself. Therefore, I probably don't bring joy. 
Just a thought, right? Um, so I'm reading this book called The Pursuit. I've already read it probably 20 times. I'm going to skip to chapter four. And I'm going to read to you a little story because I thought it was great to help you figure out who you are. Who are you? So he says this, I would rather be hated for what I am than loved for who I am not. You've got to know that you, you've got to know who you really are. When you know who you are, you don't have to prove to people who you are. Uh, you don't have to prove to anybody else who you are to everybody else, right? Like, it's kind of like even our move. Do I have to tell everybody why we're moving? No. But I also have chosen to be on social media, right? And a lot of people think they know my whole life, although I share with you probably this much of my life. I'm about to share this much of my life as soon as we move uh, because we're sh switching some priorities and uh, we are starting a podcast, my husband and I, and it's going to be called The Happy Couple, and we're going to cover a plethora, and I've been saying this for a while, but we're actually going to do it. Uh, you're going to get to know more of me, which opens the door to more criticism, but also hopefully opens the door to help people in lots of different areas of their life. Here's a story that I thought was funny. I'm going to read it to you because I laughed this morning. A middle-aged man had a heart attack, and she was taken to the hospital. While on the operation table, she had a near-death experience seeing God. She asked him uh, if this was it, if she was done. God said, no, you have another 43 years, two months, and eight days to live. <laughs> Upon recovery, the woman decided to stay in the hospital and have a facelift, liposuction, tummy tuck, etc. She even had someone come in and change her hair color. Figuring, since she had so much more time to live, she might as well look good, right, and feel good. She got out of the hospital after the last operation, and while crossing the street, she was killed by an ambulance speeding to the hospital. Arriving in front of God, she demanded, and she said, I thought that you said I had another 40 years to live. And God said, oh, I'm so sorry I didn't recognize you. <laughs> Listen. I read that this morning and it made me chuckle, but I'm like, how often do we try to be somebody else? How often do we try to be like some people on social media? Do we forget who we even are and what makes us excited about us? You know, I work with a team of people. I have an incredible team of people that I talk to every single day. And when somebody just becomes a part of our team, something I'll say to them is, hey, who are you? They're learning about social media. They're learning how to share what they're excited about. And I'll coach them on, tell me five things that make up you, especially moms. And it would be interesting if you wanted to play full out and comment. Like if I were to say, what are five things that make you, you? Not like, not even like, you could say, sure, I work here, or I'm a doctor, or I'm a home care provider, or I'm a teacher. Your hobbies. Tell me five hobbies that make you so excited, things that you're excited about. It could be like, I'm excited about the orphans in Africa. My friend Jolene has supports an incredible, uh, I don't want to say foundation, but like her heart is in Uganda. I know that's one thing that's exciting about her. She's a homeschool mom. Like there are, th she knows who she is, right? Or my friend Kelly, she is an incredible mom. Uh, but she's right now she's passionate about gardening. She's learning things that she never knew. She is in the garden all the time with her mom. She has built an incredible relationship with her parents over this last year. Like her heart is in the garden for her kids. Her heart is to be the best mom she can. She's an incredible wife and she fully supports her husband and is loving learning new things. Like who are you? You can't be the best version of you if you don't know who you are, right? So after that funny story, he says, I want you to be yourself. I want you to think about it. Aren't most of us disconnected? I'm sorry. Aren't most of the discontented people, you know, trying to be something that they are not or trying to do something they are not supposed to do? The reward for conformity was that everyone liked you except for yourself. The reward for conformity, the reward for not going after the best version of you or the things that you're excited about is everybody else liking you and you not liking yourself. So the thought for today is, do you know who you are? 
Are there things that you're not doing or accomplishing or going after because it scares you? You actually forgot? You've become so ingrained in your job and maybe parenting that you're like, that was me in the past and I could never do that again, which isn't true, right? Some things need to shift and uh, priorities might need to shift, but who are you? He goes, your potential is whatever you make it. One of the hardest things about climbing the ladder of success is getting through the crowds of copies at the bottom. The number of people who don't take advantage of their talents is more than made up by the number who take advantage of the talents that they have. You are, spe- you are a specialist. You are not created to be all things to all people. Actually, I need to say that to myself. You are not created to be all things to all people. Did you know that? You are the greatest miracle in the world. Stand out and don't blend in and do the things that you're called to do. None of us are perfect. And if we were, nobody would recognize it because a lot of people are out to criticize to criticize anybody anyways. To criticize them. Listen, the biggest enemy of most of us, most of us face is ourselves. That nagging voice that says, be like him, be like her. You're not worthy. Do what she does. Don't do what you do. People will make fun of you. Uh, that's silly. Why would you pursue that? Why would you not? Right? Do you know who you are? You were made on purpose for a purpose, and there's something for you to do that nobody else can do. Are you going to step up and do it? So I'll tell you this. Oh, there's so many stories in this chapter. I was I was underlining all of it, and I was like, I can't read the whole thing. Um, but oftentimes. Well, isn't it interesting that we worry about what other people think of us? Are they going to approve? Like even with this move, the amount of people that have given me such a hard time or like, I can't fathom you selling that house. And and I'll say, well, I didn't sell it. We're renting it for a year. What we're doing is we're just going, Lord, is this it? Like maybe it's not fully trusting because we're renting and then we're renting the home, but that's what we're doing. And it's interesting how quickly people can give you a negative, like, I can't believe that you would do that, right? But they won't look at themselves and go, listen, maybe I should, maybe I should have a little faith. Maybe, you know, I've been sitting in this uncomfortable, comfortable space where I don't love, but it's comfortable and it's easy. And yet I want to do something else, but that's hard. Like, listen, This move is not easy. Like, I'm excited, and it's not easy. I'm giving birth to a move, if you watched earlier. Like, it's hard. We were sweating all day yesterday. I woke up this morning, and I could barely, like, my back is so sore. Like, it's physically hard. It's emotionally hard. Like, I don't love that we're leaving our friends here. I don't love that our parents and our grandparents are here, and yet, I tell, I told my mentor, Sherry, this morning, we were talking about moving and she's like, Hey, how are you feeling? And I said, well, my mind tells me something. My soul has peace, right? So the last thing I'm going to say is this, people would worry less about what others think about them if they only realized how seldom people do. Isn't it interesting how we don't always make decisions based on what we're excited about, our gifts and our talents, because we're worried about what other people think when in reality, people are usually looking inward of like at themselves and not really looking at you, which kind of contradicts what I was saying because people are looking at you, but do you know what I'm saying? Like they're also still focused on themselves. Anyways, I thought this was super, super great. I'm going to say, uh, oh, there's so many good things. Listen, you've got greatness inside of you. Dare to be the best version of you. Dare to be you. Go after the things that are inside of you. Who are you? Uh, My daughter and I have a podcast called Who Is She Becoming? Really geared towards teens, but we touch on anybody. It's women. It's going to be mainly women. There's some men that have listened to it. But uh, if you go to Spotify or the podcast app, it's called Who Is She Becoming? We are going to record one today before we end up leaving. And uh, my husband and I have one coming out. And here's what I want you to know. That life is short. Life is, life can be long and short. And it might be, you might, you might be blessed with a hundred years. You might not be. We don't, we're not promised tomorrow. Um, and for those who maybe don't 
remember who you were or are, the the things that were you were so excited about when maybe before kids or you know you lost yourself in the midst of just hey, I'm surviving. There are things that you're called to do. You have greatness inside of you. And it doesn't matter what other people think about your gifts and your talents. If it excites you, that's what you're called to do. If it brings you joy, you're probably really good at it. But you have to remember what it is. And so as you're going throughout your day, think about it. What have I lost? Like, yes, like Amy says, I'm searching to find me. Go find yourself. That means you might have to sit in some quiet. You might have to go, what brought me joy years ago? What did I love to do? Was it painting? Was it taking pictures? Was it running? Was it serving? Was it volunteering? Is it an organization that brings you joy? What is it? Because you're called to do that. Not just to exist. Not just to survive. Some of us parents can feel like that sometimes. Uh, we're moving for our children. We're moving because I feel like it's going to set them up for their next, for their, like I told my dad, my dad and I were talking and I talked to him every day and he's such a great man. And I said, you know what, dad, it's not about like, I am still going to do the things that I'm called to do, but I've done a lot. My husband and I have done a lot. I feel like I'm thriving in the area that brings me joy that I can share with other people. And right now I'm going to keep doing that. And this next move is for our kids. This next move is to set them up to what they believe they're called to do. Might not make sense to anybody else, but guess what? Your reasoning doesn't have to make sense to anybody else. And it might make people mad. My parents are 100% on board. They know it. They see our children. They're like, it's so cool that you have the opportunity and that you've made that a priority. That's my priority. Some of you give your life to your kids' sports. Not wrong, right? Like, you, 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 you give up all of your weekends and all of your time to put your kids in anything they physically want to do. That's great. Maybe they'll go to college and play ball, right? Uh, that's what we're doing. My kids are going to the... Olympics of youth. I'm just going to start saying that because I think it's cute. Um, otherwise, here's the deal. That was kind of long-winded. Thanks for tuning in. Reach out with questions. I'm always here to help. If I don't have an answer, I'll help find an answer. Uh, you can go to ketomomsecrets.com and click on how to get started. Click on recipes. Click on book club. I've gone through books for years. Uh, it is raining today, so we are going to be cleaning, and I do have to pack up some trial packs for ketones. So if you've been wanting to try ketones, let me know. I'm going to pack those up, post trial in the comments. Whatever questions you have, post below. Reach out with questions. I hope you have a wonderful day. Lastly, uh, we did have a call last night, and it was about my company, my community, my the opportunity. So if you're already loving ketones and you want to know more about what we do, hear more about our company, what it could look like for you. Let's chat. Just post live in the comments and I'll send that to you. It, there's a replay. So it was super great. Thank you for tuning in. Your presence matters. I hope you guys have a wonderful day uh, and we'll talk to you very soon. Bye.